Hello everyone. Today's talk is a very quick one, but it is a wonderful one. And it is called Fascination of the Wild. And so there are moments in our life where we are suddenly thrown into the Discovery Channel animal planet and we just see how animals, in a sense, are maintaining themselves. When you see an animal, it does not have the stress of a human. And so even though it is not uh, self-aware to, to the capability of a human, but it is present in the moment. So an animal is utilizing the intelligence in the present moment. So the more you look at the present moment and see your existence in the present, the more you see that you are allowing life to, in a sense, allow you to live. In a sense, not allow, but in a sense, move you. So you're being expressed as just a natural present. <clears throat> now, we also want to say that man has many <clears throat> modalities of conception in his mind. And so he is keeping the conception of physical reality stable. And it is not that he is keeping it as an idea, it is an aspect of his self that is maintaining the hologram. So what that means is that human beings have now reached a point where they're questioning the nature of reality and that's awesome. Because that is where the fascination of the wild really comes in. You're fascinated to explore the unknown because the unknown could be chaotic and so you're no longer just pursuing an ordered life. What that means is that the way you really look at your life is linear because you're considering yourself as an individual idea, as an individual concept, as, a, as an individuality because mainly you're seeing an environment around you. Now that is simply the immediate information you're getting about reality which is present from, uh, which is just found, which is just given. In a sense it is, uh, we do not want to change a lot of sciences. You don't have to change to advance. You have to become aware to advance. <clears throat> because the awareness will, in a sense, be taking gently, gentle and very compassionate steps up the ladder of your own transcendence. So the idea of you is shaking things up in your system. And so your system is recognizing that when it breaks itself, it's still maintained. And so there is a very fascinating order in chaos. And this is simply the nature of the mind when the man is, an, is a being who is considering he knows, but then discovers the unknown. And so, when you recognize that the unknown is simply holding extensions to where your vision can go, you become a lover of the unknown. You become a lover of your eyes and you become a lover of life and you see the most immediate way you can kiss the earth is through the present moment. So now, when we are in the now, there is a fascination that comes because I've noticed it. Because you will feel subtler presence. It's as if a difference, as if you've just stepped out of pool and you've come back. So what that really means is that you haven't stepped out of pool, you simply had an experience of the current experience you've had, but in a much expander way, in a much more, let's say, uh, um, in a sense, uh, fluid and liquid way. So what that is, is that many people believe they're just this physical body. Now, Mr. Within is suggesting that you're not just the physical body. You see that your essence, similar to the simple metaphor of water, is there, but you're going through different states based on different uh, uh, um, acknowledgements and different ways you're receiving your environment. And so the pilot of consciousness really is a being who's seeing that he not just has the ability to maintain individuality, but also to be collective inspiration as well. So you see man is uh, by his self-awareness expanding or you in a sense becoming more self-aware is in a sense lifting the whales because he's just standing up from his chair. He's simply growing, he's moving. And you see, you need in collective intentions to drive your individuality. And collective intentions cannot be found in selfish actions. So all those selfish things you thought about money and all that, you know, <clears throat> it's, really, it's really about what your intention as a human being is that is suggesting wh uh, where you are and how you are there, you know? So find a place within you, a very comfortable, beautiful, and very in a sense, formless space of awareness. And you see, formless does not mean that physical reality suddenly fades. It just means that all those ideas you have about physical reality have suddenly just cleared like the last ripple of a pond. So 
We want to then observe the mind through different states of being. So do not be convinced by this one way of looking at the world and saying, this is my world. Explore that world. Try to break it, not in the way that of attachment, by the way of allowance. So it is not breaking, it becomes a beautiful surrender. And not a surrender into ideology. It is actually a surrender out of ideology. There are many people who, in a sense, will take your idea, in a sense, bring you to a neutral point and give you another idea. But that, that is not required once you are self-aware. A self-aware being means that you are immediately saying, I am now ready <clears throat> to know myself and work with the drive and the spark of my existence. In other words, I am now ready to look at my whole life. In other words, I'm putting all games aside. And when you put games aside and you look at what you are doing, you will see that immediately the illusion disappears because you have kept the illusion. And so the eyes of man can become clear in an instant of his knowing. And knowing that is of that is present but is formless. And so that is how you begin engaging different platforms where you can be activated into different uh, abilities. So what that means is that Mr. Within, in a sense, uh, in his, let's say, silent gazes, has recognized that reality is something which you are engaging with. And so become aware of the person who is engaging and you see it is not just a person, it is a collective intelligence. And a collective intelligence means that what is, what is keeping your world and keeping every other person's world is occurring simultaneously. It is allowing uh, reality to be shaped individually because it is collectively originated. And so many people think that we actually came into duality when the Big Bang happened. Not really. You came into a collective allowance based on what I like to playfully call the Heavenly Fathers because they really, there really has been movement in understanding. And you see, you think that in, it began in duality. It actually began also collective observance because the duality was simply a tool for the greater body of man. So you see, the earth that we are in is actually a very playful conception of the earth that we think we are in. And so we don't want thoughts to step aside because we no longer want to wait in this line. We no longer want to wait for that perfect teaching to find us or that teacher to come. We want to understand that we are immediately confronting self. That means no one is look, asking this question because only you can ask this question. And so you, you, in a sense, get calm and you, in a sense, go to states of, in a sense, a very resonant peace, a very harmonious peace because you are seeing that your ideas do not have to in a sense, always control you. And it is very important to know this because some men have great pens in their hand and they are not writing. What that means is that we have human beings who know of their ability, but also must know that they must break any idea of their ability and go really see what their ability is. And so in the movie, 300, it becomes very significant how the child was suddenly uh, uh, thrown into the wilderness with a spear to go kill a giant wolf while, you know, falling backwards, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> but, <clears throat> man must elevate beyond the conception of an elevator. So, you will see that shape has guided you so far and in its observance which in a sense dissolves it with your just knowing with your presence and your knowing you will see that all the things that you judged that you thought were wrong were actually always perceived in such an observant manner that it's as if like if you didn't take care of your reality other beings are taking care of it to learn from it so what that means is that man is a very, uh, very interesting like being. And so what that means is that the way he's acknowledging himself is in existence is interesting because he's creating such a reality present. But we want the rings on our fingers to mean more because we see orbits, we see greater, greater patterns of uh, movement in how psychology never needed a therapist. 
because that concept of individuation at times needs to dissolve for man to get existential understanding. You sometimes find urges within you that you wonder whether is this an environment or is this me or from somewhere. And if you are very sensitive to your memory, you will realize that this way of action of yours is cannot be from a, a sense of visual past. So if you become aware of your ideas, and so the observer of this, you know, in, a, in other words, object of observance is always beyond that space. And so if you observe thought to then absorb emotion, to then absorb all form, then you will be in a space where before reality occurs, you are aware of the occurrence. And so I have found my intuition, in a sense, not in a very, you know, like fictional way increasing. It's just simply my trust in life has given me uh, an ability to just tap into what, uh, how my environment is shifting. So I'm not saying that there's some magical, mystical power, okay? Even though the mystic's eyes do see the world change many times. But there is, there is reality here. And so it is your eyes which are significant because that is what you're looking out of. So to be aware of the body is simply to share an understanding that you are part of a greater view. So many people might have gotten glimpses of a greater sense of collective knowing without ideology. They were just like, yes, this moment, yes, the feeling, wow, yeah, yes, it is so properly aligned. And so if you increase these moments, you see man will begin allowing life to pull him to where he is needed. So before I thought that, oh, I got to think about what I got to do, then I got to design it. Oh my God, they're telling me to think about what kind of job I want. Look at the system. So I got to study the whole system before I know what kind of job I want. Look at how much work, right? But also there is the peace in, in a sense, uh, a sense of intelligence beyond intel intellect. Because in a sense, the Zen master's stillness is a state of very able knowing, able knowing, regardless of how much he chooses to express or finds a need to, to express. And so you will find an aspect of your life that is wild and it is not dangerous, it is wild. Wild means that you know in the jungle that you are, you will know that uh, you are, your eyes, your view, your observance cannot be taken from you. You see, man simply needs to recognize and acknowledge himself as collective consciousness by seeing that he can observe beyond his individual eyes. In other words, if I'm in a room, let's say, and let's say there are people behind me, you will see that man has a way of constantly, very linearly thinking about uh, how his eyes are seeing. So you're like, oh, I only see this part. Who could be behind me? But there are ways of collective acknowledgement. In other words, it is, it is a, sense, a sense of expression of yours, an aspect of self that is present beyond thought, that is observing the knowing. So where intuition comes to man is actually beyond the clarity that man can even form to think he's clear. So you see, it is a different aspect of your intelligence. There's a, there's a sleeping giant within you, and this sleeping giant is, has woken up also, <laughs> let's say, you know? In other words, what I'm trying to say by that is that you have great ability in different states of being, and you are present in them. You are present. And so open your presence by recognizing that through the emptiness of uh, the observance of the nature of reality, and not that emptiness where you are saying, oh, it, it means my definition of empty, so yeah. No, in other words, your eyes will be empty too in this observance of emptiness, because you will see that the way you're engaging in how reality should be shaped is in a sense being pulled back by your observance of the patterns you forgot. And so as you remember patterns within your memory, you get momentum. So many people tell you, just be in the present, don't utilize your past, don't utilize your senses of, of future. No, 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 you should use actually all of it, but the present is how your physicality should be maintained and many other things. So think of man having <coughs> certain uh, various 
dimensions to himself. And so one dimension requires his acknowledgement of the physical presence. So in other words, before we talk about dimensions, I want everyone to simply be present in their room, in their environment, and in a sense, not have that constant interpretation of thought, which is in a sense giving you an idea that you are thinking. In other words, silence, stillness, that is it. The mind will in a sense become quiet. The mind will learn. And so as you're comfortably just present, you will then see that man's certainty from the present then reaches to greater, uh, greater abilities to confront different modalities of past and future. So you see, you can't really uh, uh, work with your sense of future and past properly if you're still <clears throat> acknowledging yourself through an individual sense. So you still think something is opposing you. If you feel something is opposing you, not that you should just, just be like, no, nothing's opposing me, I'm just, you know, the, the strongest man in the world. No, mindfulness is the most important um, regulatory ability in, in the movement of ideology. And mindfulness means that when you enter an idea, you come out of it, then you move to other ideas. And so there's this peaceful sense of ability to always be uh, the knowing of the wind present and shaping reality, but in a sense not present as well. You will see that once man becomes aware of the present moment, he will see the enormity of the potential of existence that the abstract can form. And so when he looks at the vastness of his mind, because it is so vast, it is empty. And so when man confronts the idea of infinity, he actually thinks of the opposite. He thinks of uh, emptiness, because that is what the idea is designed to show you show you that in your emptiness there is an observance that is infinite. And so that becomes the fascination where you become so wild, not in, you know, in, a, in a way, in other words, you might be even very gently walking, but your intensity of concentration and acknowledgement of different, just different shapes will show you. Because if you want to learn uh, about your sense of multidimensionality, the most important thing that man's consciousness has to see is his idea of himself, is his conception of reality. So in other words, become curious of how you're looking at things. Do not just be like, oh, I'm just this, this is it, you know? Because that is giving you a conviction in a static state. I want you to have a conviction in a dynamic state where you see you are so not convinced that you are always the proper action. So you see that the greatest generals really accepted, I don't know how this war is going to go, but you know, in their mind, in the gentleness of their gaze, they saw that war is a step into the unknown. And so it is your intent and concentration of, in a sense, reaching your destination, that you actually become very, very powerful. And you do not, in a sense, even though there is death, you will see that death is always pointing to beyond itself. So if death was a dying man, his fingers would be pointing up. And when you look up, you will be looking down at all reality from your sense of omniscience and omnipresence. It is a beautiful thing. Man's mind really needs to advance. In other words, I want people to recognize just as how our technologies are advancing and we're fascinated by external technology, become fascinated in internal technology. In other words, everything you know about every idea or every sense of knowing about whatever reality is, acknowledge it, realize that it is your companion and then jump into the newest idea with the clarity of just being born into that idea. What that means is that the intelligence that acknowledges the memory that is aware of itself is based on a form that unspeakably is being observed by a collective intelligence of the individuality. So with this understanding, we begin to see that the significance of truth is to get us working. Truth wants to get us moving, it wants us to figure out, it wants us to get engaged in life wants us to go in all those trips that we thought we never had the time for when we actually did because life that's life you don't have the time to go on a trip well guess what you only have a hundred years and not that you have it but just that's the physical appreciation so you need to go do those dances you thought you never could do 
and be comfortable. Have the simplicity of the honest fool. So it is okay to be a fool in certain scenarios, but not a fool that is, in a sense, blind. Because when a fool's eyes open up, he even realizes that his awareness and omnipresence is keeping that relationship because it is growing. And so a human being who does not want to change anything will recognize the ability of the present because that is where you really begin exploring fascinating aspects of yourself. Become an advanced communicator because now is the time. Now is the space for it. And you will see that everyone looks at reality and knows some things. You know some things, but in those things that you know, observe them. In a sense, take them and uh, you go through alchemical states within your mind. In other words, turn lead into gold and simply look at your ideas which you know a bit longer and see their depth. Trust me, it is worth uh, looking at the etymology of words. It is worth looking at how an idea is constructed because it's as simple as observing the design. So you don't need to memorize anything when you know how the design of the origin is. And so the design of the origin will actually take you into conceiving it, actually. But again, all these are uh, practices to help you trust life and trust the moment that you're in and also observe the moment that is in. It is okay to look deeply. Forget language. Language is like uh, a very, very uneducated person. The concept of language is very uneducated because it is only saying this is it. And it's not that, it, I'm being playful here when I'm saying uneducated, the concept of language. I'm simply saying that if we were to observe the way language allows expression, it is shaped and sometimes it is too shaped for our, our natural existential preference. So you must observe this. You must see whether, uh, how well you feel about your feet. Some people, they'll be like, I'm okay, I'm fine. But uh, subconsciously or not even subconsciously, but in a sense, they really feel like they don't know. And so when an I don't know comes into your life, make it deep. Because that is what broke all the illusions that I thought I was. And it's not that it's an illusion. The illusion is always leading you. So what that means is that when you get out of the illusion, you see that there was never a reason to cast out the illusion. The illusion was there to allow you to navigate to greater states of consciousness. And so self-awareness really is a, a, an honest act. So to be honest with yourself means that I don't want to say I'm confident based on these things that are constantly changing. In other words, I don't want to even say I'm a body. I don't want to even make shape, make individual, because I am observing it from a stature of, you know, a limitless sky. You are, it is required. We do not, our schools are not giving us, or are not in a sense giving, but our schools are not providing the self-observance we need because they cannot. It is an act of self. It is an individual act. And so maturity has many levels. And so some people have used the term spiritual maturity, but I will just say engagement with life, involvement with life. You need to let life also teach, your, teach you some lessons, not just your parents, not just the people you know, not just your comfort zone. Because your mind deserves better. Your mind deserves to be open in ways that it is always wondrously expanding. And then you will see in your involvement with greater intensities of, uh, I guess, uh, awareness and involvement and movement and purpose and direction, your purpose actually uh, intensifies and it's kind of like how perhaps someone steps on a gas pedal. Now, it is important to see that uh, who we know ourselves to be is always a changing life process. That is simply life. Your body physically changes as well every two weeks, I believe. So regardless of that, the cells in your body, regardless of that, you will see that your ability to trust life will then, in a sense, put your vision 
in a very selfless and compassionate manner of observance where every design is absorbed. It's as if you thought you had to go communicate to all life. All life is communicating to you. And you begin seeing that galaxies can be seen even when <laughs> water is being drained in the faucet of your sink when you are, in a sense, washing dishes for example. Your mind begins to integrate different aspects of your experience. So it's like having an intense experience and seeing like, I can't go back to that same life, right? So imagine being aware of simultaneous intensities where you can tune into. So sometimes, for example, when I look at the nature of deep thought, there's a level of concentration that takes you to a point where your mind randomly starts creating shapes. So you suddenly see that, it not shapes in, in regards to a completely geometric drawn way, but just random, random imagery begins to pop and you wonder that if your mind or your mental circuitry is, is proper. But you see that it is proper, it is simply you uh, working with a new sense of your mind. So the mind has new dimensions. And what I mean by new is simply that it has doors which you have not opened. Open the doors that are within your mind. Now is the time because now the intensity and the, in a sense, the energy that is working with man is, is in a sense bursting man. There is a very profound, beautiful existential attention on man that in a sense, it will make him in a sense vibrate into life. You will, you will see that you, will, you can become so aware and when you become aware of let's say those liquid states of being, you know, uh, the gas is a different talk, but liquid states of being, you will see that you begin allowing the different senses of knowing that you were conscious of in different lifetimes to work with you because you are now realizing I'm not all these individual things, I'm the collective view. I'm the view of the whole. And so there is never a whole that is <laughs> too black. You will see that even black holes conceptually enlighten you when you look at <laughs> what events are happening at the horizon, I guess. I don't know. Much blessings and I hope in this talk you have in a sense seen that man is able because he puts the ability there. Because he, his vision, his self-awareness provides the intelligence that is able. So observe it and recognize that the nature of your mind is clear but not clear to an unclear self. So if you don't know who you are, that sense of self is associating with things which is not completely resonating with. So it's like, what the hell? I'm, I'm in this environment, I think I'm this person, but I'm not really feeling it. What's wrong? And so there are existential urges. That means that you're, uh, the collective consciousness, or in a sense, life is wants to direct your view, your eyes to certain things. So if you do not trust your movements, you cannot even observe intelligence. Without trust, man would not even step out his door to eat lunch. If he does not trust the outside world, you will see that you need trust in your unknown. And the best trust is through love. And love means that there is an aspect of you that is embracing existence to such an instantaneous and, in a sense, present degree that there is nothing that can touch you when you were always untouched. And so, the fascination of the wild becomes the, their greatest treasure to reveal. Your fascination is here to allow very great senses of knowing to, in a sense, uh, land properly within your space of awareness. Acknowledge yourself as the moment of being, of awareness, rather than the bodies in which are present in the moment. Because trust me, there are many ways in which eyes can be formed to then think that there are many ways to you know, become formless. Simply trust the knowing of your heart of heart and recognize who you are, because it will fascinate.